Imagine holding a piece of the early solar system in your hand, a piece that contains carbon and water, two key ingredients for life, a piece that could reveal secrets about our cosmic origins and our future destiny. Sounds amazing, right? Well, that's exactly what NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission has achieved. It has collected and brought back to Earth a sample from the asteroid Bennu, a remnant of the ancient solar system that contains clues to the origin of life. In this video, we will explore the amazing discovery of water and carbon in the asteroid sample collected by this mission. We will learn how NASA scientists analyzed the sample, what they found out about Bennu's composition and origin, and what implications this discovery has for our understanding of the solar system and the origin of life. This is a groundbreaking discovery that could change the way we think about our place in the universe. It could also help us answer some of the most fundamental questions that humans have ever asked. Where did we come from? How did life begin? Are we alone? If you are curious about these questions and more, then stay tuned and watch this video till the end. You won't regret it. Collecting a sample from Bennu was not an easy task, as Bennu is a very small and rocky asteroid, about the size of a skyscraper, that spins around its own axis every 4.3 hours. It also has very low gravity, which means that landing on it would be impossible. So, NASA came up with this clever solution, a robotic spacecraft called OSIRIS-REx, which stands for Origins, Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, Security Regolith Explorer. This spacecraft collected a sample from Bennu using a robotic arm and a sampling device that briefly touched the surface and fired a burst of nitrogen gas to stir up some dust and rocks. The sample was then stored in a capsule and delivered to Earth, where it was opened and analyzed by NASA scientists. If you want to know more about how this amazing mission was accomplished, you can watch our previous video on this topic. The link is in the description below. The capsule was then transported to a special facility at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where it was opened and inspected. The sample was carefully extracted from TAGSUM and transferred to a nitrogen-filled chamber to prevent contamination and degradation. Then it was divided into several portions for different types of analysis. NASA scientists used various instruments and techniques to study the sample, such as X-ray fluorescence, infrared spectroscopy, mass spectrometry, electron microscopy, and isotopic analysis. They also compared the sample with data collected by OSIRIS-REx's onboard instruments during its orbit around Bennu. The results of the analysis were astonishing. The sample contained water molecules and a large amount of carbon-bearing material, such as organic molecules and carbonates. Organic molecules are compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen, and sometimes other elements like oxygen and nitrogen. They are considered to be the building blocks of life, as they are involved in many biological processes. Carbonates are minerals that contain carbon and oxygen, and sometimes other elements like calcium and magnesium. They are formed by chemical reactions between water and rocks. These findings suggest that Bennu is not just a pile of dry rocks, but a rich reservoir of water and carbon that has been preserved for billions of years. But where did these materials come from? How did they end up on Bennu? To answer these questions, we need to go back in time to the early days of our solar system. About 4.5 billion years ago, our sun was surrounded by a disk of gas and dust, called the protoplanetary disk. This disk gradually condensed into larger and larger bodies, called planetesimals, which eventually formed the planets and moons that we know today. But not all planetesimals became planets. Some of them remained as smaller bodies, called asteroids and comets, that orbit the Sun in different regions. Some of these asteroids and comets contain water and carbon, which they acquired from the protoplanetary disk or from collisions with other bodies. Bennu is one of these asteroids. It is classified as a B-type asteroid, which means that it has a dark and carbon-rich surface. It is also a rubble pile asteroid, which means that it is composed of fragments of other asteroids that were shattered by impacts and then reassembled by gravity. Bennu's parent body was probably a larger asteroid that formed in the outer part of the asteroid belt, between Mars and Jupiter, where water and carbon were more abundant. This asteroid was then hit by another asteroid, about 700 million years ago, 
and broke into smaller pieces. One of these pieces was Bennu, which inherited some of the water and carbon from its parent body. Then, it migrated from the asteroid belt to its current orbit, closer to the Earth, due to gravitational interactions with other planets, especially Jupiter. This migration brought Bennu closer to the Sun, which caused some of its water and carbon to evaporate or escape into space. However, some of it remained trapped inside Bennu's rocks or under its surface, where it was protected from the solar radiation and heat. The discovery of water and carbon in Bennu's sample has profound implications for our understanding of the solar system and the origin of life. It confirms that this asteroid, as we mentioned, is a remnant of the early solar system that has preserved its primitive material for billions of years. It also tells us that it is a potential source of water and carbon for other worlds, including our own. As we know, water and carbon are essential for life. Without water, there would be no liquid medium for chemical reactions to take place, and without carbon, there would be no organic molecules to form complex structures and functions. Therefore, finding water and carbon on an asteroid like Bennu raises the possibility that life could have originated or evolved on other planets or moons in our solar system or beyond. One of the hypotheses for the origin of life on Earth is that it was seeded by asteroids or comets that delivered water and organic molecules to our planet. These materials could have then combined with other elements and energy sources to form the first living cells. This hypothesis is supported by the fact that some meteorites that have fallen on Earth contain amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. Another hypothesis for the origin of life on Earth is that it was transferred from another world that already had life, such as Mars or Europa. This process is called panspermia, which means seeds everywhere. It suggests that life could have traveled across space on asteroids or comets that were ejected from one planet or moon and landed on another. This hypothesis is supported by the fact that some microorganisms can survive extreme conditions, such as high radiation, low temperature, and vacuum. Bennu's sample can help us test and refine these hypotheses by providing more clues about the nature and origin of water and organic molecules on asteroids. It can also help us compare Bennu's composition with other asteroids and meteorites that have been studied before. However, this sample can also help us understand how water and carbon cycle through our solar system over time. It can tell us how much water and carbon are available on different bodies, how they are distributed and transported, how they interact with other materials and processes, and how they affect the habitability and evolution of those bodies. This discovery is a milestone in astrobiology and planetary science. It shows us that asteroids like Bennu are witnesses of our cosmic history that can reveal secrets about our past and future. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. See you next time.